What up? It's the main man, Rubberzo here, man. And man, I got a special one, man. This right here, this is for the old cats, for the old guys, man. Probably like, you gotta be, probably be like 40, 40, age 40, 35 and up, you know what I'm saying? To probably get this video right here, man. So if you're young, you watching this, you probably don't even want to, you probably won't get, get this. But man, this is the real story of the real Crocodile Dundee, man. If you're a kid that grew up in the 80s or a child of the 80s and everything, you watched Crocodile Dundee. It was a fucking classic movie, man. You know what I'm saying? When your boy put out a knife, he was like, that's not a knife. This is a knife. And you know what I'm saying? Your boy pulled out a big blade and everything. So, man, we about to sit here and watch this. And it said Outback Tragedy. So, let's see, man. Let's see what this is what they're talking about. Classic movie. Give him your wallet. What for? He's got a knife. <laughs> Knife. That's a knife. Give him your wallet. What for? He's got a knife. <laughs> That's a knife. That's a knife. In 1986, the Australian film. Bro, if you was a kid, bro, that was a classic scene, bro. In the 80s, that was a classic. Crocodile Dundee was released to international critical acclaim and record-breaking box office success. The film stars Australian actor... I'm telling you, people do not understand. I, I, I was a kid at the 80s when this movie came out, bro. It was, like, it was everywhere. Everybody wanted to see it. And this thing, dudes who never who was never in the country or whatever, city dudes started dressing like cowboys and shit. During comedy funny. legend Paul Hogan, as the titular character, Mick Crocodile Dundee, who is betrayed as the Australian Bushman archetype, adjusting to city life in New York City. But the character of Mick Dundee was reportedly based on a real person, Rod Ansell, who lived and led a very strange and tragic life. This is the story of the real Crocodile Dundee. Man, shout out to this, to this, uh, to this page, the channel, man. I'm gonna give them, they, they do Shadow Matters. Y'all go ahead and subscribe to them. I'm gonna go ahead and subscribe to them. And I'm gonna go ahead and send them a like right now live while we doing while we doing this. Back to schedule programs. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Shadow Matter, where we will be exploring the real-life inspiration for Paul Hogan's character, Mick Dundee, and the very strange and dark incidents and exploits of Australian outback grazier, Rod Ansell. If this is your first time here, hello and welcome. Consider subscribing to see more content on a darker side of... Yeah, go ahead, y'all. Like, subscribe to them, you know what I'm saying? I like some of the stories I'm seeing on here, so... But we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit. Let's go. Inspiration and the events leading up to it. A simple question remains. Why? To understand this, we have to look back at the real man behind the inspiration and the events leading up to it. More than 20 years ago, police shot dead a drug-crazed gunman after he opened fire on them at an outback roadblock and killed one of their colleagues. Initially, the killer could not be identified, but was later revealed to be legendary barefoot bushman Rod Ansell, the original model for Crocodile Dundee. In his 44 years, Ansell had gone from one of the... See, when you... And when you're a kid and you watching these movies, you don't really get you don't you don't get to hear this part that these movies are sometimes based on real life events. Now you do a lot of times, but back then in the eighties, it was vague. You know what I'm saying? Northern Territory's most recognizable characters to crazed cop killer. Rodney William Antle was born in October of 1954 in Queensland, Australia, the third of four children. At age fit, he he. Does the actor who played him doesn't look like, but I guess it's not meant to really look like he's just supposed to look as rugged, like a real outbacker. Okay. Rodney William Antle was born in October of 1954 in Queensland, Australia. The third of four children, at age 15, he moved to the Northern Territory and later began earning money through hunting feral water buffalo in the top end, with the meat being exported to foreign markets. In late 1977, this seemingly reserved man of the land would be thrust into the spotlight after spending a total of 56 days stranded in a remote croc-infested river and his tale of survival that made him a local celebrity. Ansel had just finished a job near Kununurra in Western Australia's Kimberley region when he crossed the border into the Northern Territory to put a boat on the Victoria River. 
He was not specific about his plans, telling his then girlfriend that he would be gone for a few months on a fishing trip. Although he later recounted to others that he was really there to illegally poach crocs, only okay. taking with him a small amount of supply. Okay, I can see. Okay, so he was a poacher, illegally poaching. Yes. A knife, a rifle, and his two eight-week-old bull terriers. He traversed the river in a six-meter motorboat that was capsized. According to Ansel, the boat was capsized by quote something big. Later recounting it to be either a whale or a large croc. He later managed to climb into another three-meter dinghy, saving his dogs, one of which had a broken leg, and managed to salvage his rifle, 27 bullets, two knives, some canned food, and only one oar. With no fresh water and no one realizing his predicament, Ansel was stranded almost 200... That's a bad predicament to be into, man, for real. So he must... He, he, will, he was a real wilderness dude, because you see people on YouTube right now with all kind of channels surviving in the wilderness and doing... Um, bushcrafted and everything so he was really kilometers from the nearest permanent settlement on the first night in the dinghy ansel drifted into the timor sea and eventually washed up on an island in the mouth of the fitzmaurice river he was now no longer on the water course that he said he would be the following days saw ansel's dinghy move up the river with tidal flows in which he was eventually marooned without fresh water and little in his dinghy to eat sparing his bullets when he needed he shot wild cattle and buffalo he reported to drinking their blood to stay hydrated, caught goannas, and followed bees to their hives for honey. To protect himself from crocodiles, Rod slept in the forks of trees and once shot a five-metre croc to protect his dogs, keeping the head as a souvenir. Over the course of eight weeks, Rod Ansel debated the possibility of being... He was almost like fucking Joan in the Wheel type shit, Moby Dick and shit. Just him and his dog survived with the rifle. ...being rescued as the search party would most likely be searching for him in the Victoria River and not the Fitzmaurice. Adding to that fact, he told others he would be away for months. After 56 days, Rod Ansell heard the distinctive... So, so, after, so after him being gone for months, I mean, he did tell you he'd be gone for months and, then, and he was gone for 56 days, so that's like, that's damn near two months right now. ...tinkling of horse bells. Tracing the sound back, he was drawn to two Aboriginal stockmen and their cattle manager, Luke McCall. Although he was somewhat emaciated, Ansel was otherwise healthy. Once home safely, Rod Ansel initially kept the eight-week ordeal to himself, saying that his river experience had simply not been a big deal. Quote, All the blokes up in this country who work with cattle, ringers, stockmen, bull catchers, whatever, all of them, have really narrow shaves all the time. But they never talk about it. It's like going out to shoot a kangaroo. You don't come back and say you missed it by half an inch. You either get it or you didn't. So that is how I looked at it. Until the papers got a hold of the story, and that changed a lot of things. And hmm. okay, so now he probably told a good story, and we're just gonna see what happens. Quote: By the time the media got a hold of the story, Rod Ansell was thrust into the spotlight, being dubbed the modern-day Robinson Crusoe. Later that year, he met 22-year-old Dwayne Von Oz, a Melbourne radio operator working in a remote Aboriginal community. At Wadir, they married and would have two sons, Callum in 1979 and Sean in 1981. The couple lived a simple life, camping under a canvas sheet with no running water or electricity. See, his, he probably told a, 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 good, a good, great story that would have just been a good story just to like, you know, I guess your friends and stuff like that. But once the newspapers get to it, back then... I don't, writers back then were really creative writers. These writers right now, it seems like they actually have all been given like a, a, a skeleton of what they, or a story they need to write, and, and they had to write it. Back then, real journalism was real journalism in the 80s, I would say. It, or it was much more real back then than it was now. We had like real people that would really speak their mind in the news. So back then I see how the people would sensationalize stories because you wanted people to read your uh, newspaper because back then people did a lot more reading. In 1979, filmmaker Richard Oxenborough approached Rod Ansell to relive his adventures for a documentary called To Fight the Wild, which was also adapted into a book the following year. It should be noted that there was a lot of reserved skepticism in regards to Ansel's ordeal. Many locals in the top end asked why he would not have just followed the Fitzmaurice River back to civilization. Adding to that, they claimed he was only making up the story for publicity. Regardless, the story of his survival managed... I mean... 
if the locals know the area, they would say, why wouldn't he just go out there? So they would know if the story is kind of real or not. Also, too, um, um, like you said, why wouldn't he take the river back up to like uh, civilization or something? Like I said, but he did run into a movie crew. Maybe he knew. Like, you never know, man. ...to reach headlines outside of Australia and captured the attention of British talk show host Michael Parkinson. In 1981, Ansel agreed to be interviewed by Parkinson in Sydney, and his tale of survival reached an even... ...when I was probably one years old. Yeah, I'm an old nigga. But no grey hair though, not yet. ...bigger audience. Ansel attended the interview barefoot and recounted his antics in the city, stating that he preferred to sleep on the floor of his hotel room and was utterly confused by the concept of a bidet. If this... A hey, yeah, this... <laughs> I mean, I can understand how the bidet, so, but in the movie, they did play it up. Like, he was like, what is that? Like, yeah. It all sounds familiar. It's because the real-life scenarios were lifted into the script of the 1986 film Crocodile Dundee. The interview caught yeah, comedian... 1986? Fuck, I was six years old. Damn. ...and actor Paul Hogan's attention and inspired him and co-writers Ken Shady and John Cornell to create the character of Mick Crocodile Dundee. The ensuing film tells of a New York reporter who travels to the Northern Territory to do a feature story on a bushman and crocodile hunter, Mick Dundee. After being impressed by Mick's antics, the reporter invites him back with her to New York City to continue the story. What follows is a fish out of water story that ends with a budding romance. The film was made for 10 million Australian dollars and grossed over 330 million US at the box office. Becoming the second- The movie, the movie was big, I'm trying to tell you. The movie was big, I remember a kid like, I think it was even a part two, I think. Highest grossing film of 1986, just behind Top Gun, and the highest... Top Gun was so fucking huge, bro. Top Gun in the 80s, bro, had all the white dudes wanted to be air fighter pilots. Even black dudes were talking about they wanted to fly air, they wanted to fly jets and stuff back in the 80s. It's grossing Australian film of all time. The endearing tale of Mick Dundee and adjustment to big city life resonated with audience and was hailed by critics. At the time of release for Crocodile Dundee, Rod Ansell, his wife and their two sons were living on a remote piece of land nearly 10 miles from the nearest phone. So going to the movies wasn't a possibility. And news of the successful worldwide phenomenon based on him didn't reach him for some time. Rod Ansell later recalled hearing about it through friends saying to him, So why, yeah, why didn't the people who... They didn't pay him nothing? Like, that's okay. About all the similarities. One example being that both the character and Ansel shared a unique title amongst Indigenous Australians, being recognised as fully initiated white man, and both spoke Urupunga fluently. According to his mates, Ansel was at one with Arnhem Land's Indigenous Australians. The massive success of the film put Rod Ansel back into the spotlight, and he was named Territorian of the Year in 1987 for helping put Top End on the world map. However, and Territorian of the year. Just something so, uh, let's say, <laughs> uh, imperialistic or, uh, let's say, uh, colonizing. <laughs> Ansel's newfound fame alienated him from his peers, and he later lamented of his rejection back home. Quote, Proving the point about this story being true or not wouldn't matter that much because the people it would affect who affect me are the people who live here where I work and know me. People up here have a phobia about appearing on the media so that was detrimental to my standing in their eyes. They thought it was a terrible thing to do. End quote. A few years after the release of Crocodile Dundee, Rod Ansell and a friend attempted to capitalise on his celebrity status and start a tourism business on his piece of land, calling it the home of the real Crocodile Dundee. They sent a letter to Paul Hogan's office asking for permission, which was denied, and Ansell was threatened with legal action if he moved forward with the idea. The rejection along with alienation from his peers, caused by his time in the spotlight, embittered Ansell, who unsuccessfully took Hogan to court over the issue. Later in the decade, Ansel found himself in a dispute with the Northern Territory government 
Over the controversial bovine brucellosis and tuberculosis eradication campaign, and the government forced Ansel to kill 3,000 head of feral buffalo on his property. Three neighbouring graziers were eventually awarded $100,000 each in government loans, but Ansel was never compensated for his losses. To yeah, I can see why. They probably, yeah, they probably figured, I don't know, there's probably some hating going on or something, but they probably didn't like, yeah, they probably feel you get money, whatever. Add insult to injury, his property became infested with invasive mimosa weeds, with no money to fight the weeds. The Ansels were forced to sell their property in June of 1991. Not long after that, the couple's 15-year marriage fell apart and the two were eventually divorced. Ansel was then convicted of stealing 30 cattle worth 7,200 in 1992 and subsequently fined $520 for assaulting a cattle station manager. With little prospects on the horizon for Ansel, he be yeah, An Ansel was pissed off. His homies don't, his, his, his people don't fuck with him no more. Uh, the government told him he can't do no, um, he can't do the tourist thing. But real Crocodile Dundee, then I mean, even the movie Crocodile Dundee, uh, Paul Hunter said no. Then you got uh, the government killing his cattle. I mean, he, he was pissed off. Began growing cannabis and later formed a relationship with Sherry Hewson on Urupanga Station on the Roper River. Depressed, unemployed and cash-strapped, the situation was about to get a whole lot worse for Ansel. By the mid-90s, Ansel was heavily using a mixture of amphetamines and cannabis, which made his behaviour erratic and paranoid. On the he, was, he, was, he was on that meth. We... Night of August 2nd, 1999, Ansel fired six shots into a caravan occupied by a couple at Livingston, about 50 kilometres south of Darwin. Another and paranoid on the night of august 2nd meth, meth does make people paranoid 1999 ansel fired six shots into a caravan occupied by a couple at livingston about 50 kilometers south of darwin another neighbor ran at the gunman armed with a baseball bat and ansel shot off his index finger during the strange series of shootings ansel was raving that freemasons had kidnapped his sons and were now stalking him he ran into scrubland with his rifle and a 12-gauge shotgun Ansel could have easily escaped from the area, but for some reason decided not to flee. Police set up cordons, and about 12 hours later, were manning a roadblock at the intersection of the Stewart Highway and Old Bino Road, near Acacia Hills. Sergeant Glenn Hewitson and his partner, Senior Constable James O'Brien, were in that position when Ansel ambushed them at about 10.45 a.m. First, a local man who had stopped to talk to the police officers was shot in the pelvis. The police returned fire. A shot from Ansel's rifle ricocheted off a police car and hit Sergeant Hewitson below his bulletproof vest in the abdomen, killing him. That Constable O'Brien emptied his magazine, firing at Ansel's position, then took his fallen partner's weapon and continued firing back. He states, quote, The only verbal communication I had with the gunman was when I was reloading the shotgun for the first time. I called out to him to put his weapons down. He yelled back, You're all dead. End quote. O'Brien managed to take Ansel down after he... Yeah, he, he, was, he, was, he was going crazy on that meth, man. ...he exposed his position when other law enforcement entered the affray. Rod Ansel died at the scene. Once a celebrated Bushman who survived the rugged wilderness... R.P. Rod Ansel. ...ness of the top end was now remembered as a drug-crazed gunman who took the life of a respected police officer and father of two. Rod Ansel was given an Aboriginal burial yeah, up. at Mount Cat in Arnhem Land. Rod Ansel went to the grave bitter, not earning a single dime from the successful movie inspired by his likeness. The star won't give him a G day with this sexy there are many theories as to why Rod chose this dark path of violence and self-destruction. But if you would like to share your own thoughts on the subject, then feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. This has that was a great this is, this is a great story. Thank you. For been an episode on the real crocodile Dundee, Rod Ansel. If you would like one of your comments to show up right here on the screen, then start a comment with. Man, look, man. Shout out to them for doing this story. The shadow matters. I will be uh, doing more videos, but uh, I want y'all to go ahead and subscribe to them. Y'all saw me subscribe, and I did up a like. Yo, peace.
Peace. See y'all on the next one.